Sabiku Namaste, good morning and welcome. We are doing UHV3 and we were on lecture four. And in this chart that you see before you, we were trying to discuss this yesterday. You see what the picture looks like when the self is functioning without awakening to the higher activities. So without the guidance from the B1 block, going only by the B2 block, this is what it looks like. You will see the yellow part, that is the B2 block. These are the activities that are going on within us. We may still not be aware of them, but they are going on within, within us. And with this we function, because whatever is in our imagination, with that we give instruction to the body depending on what we want to do outside with it. But the base for that is here in our imagination. So in the imagination, the desire, thought, expectation are going on continuously. And yesterday we discussed about desire. When we have a desire, some sort of image seems to be formed. You see a picture within yourself. So if you say, I want a car, there is a picture of a car within you that you see. And every desire is associated with some feeling. If you look at thought, thought gives us the ability to analyze things. So when we think about things, we have the capacity to analyze things. We compare things, isn't it? Whenever you have a desire, it is about what you want to be. At the root, of course, you want to be happy. But it may be camouflaged in something else because we may not be aware that wanting to be happy is the main desire. We may assume that something outside is going to give us this happiness. So essentially desire is about what you want to be and the thought is about how you're going to make that happen. How you're going to achieve that desire. So we discussed this yesterday. Then the thought can be about you know, different options, analyzing them, comparing them, seeing you know, what is possible for you, all of that. So you'll find that very often we keep doing this throughout the day. Something or the other is going on. It may not be a desire to go out and purchase something. It may not be linked to physical facility. It may be linked to um, sort of, you know, our interactions with other human beings about how we are with them. And then you have the lowest activity in the self, that is the activity of expectation. This has to do with the information that you get through the five sense organs, largely, of the body. So while the sensation is in the body, but you are the one the self is the one that is reading it. And on the basis of what it reads, it decides something about it. So if I hear some good music, suppose I like the taste of that music. Taste meaning? We use the word taste 
but we use it generically for all the five senses. So I like the taste of that music. And once I have heard it, then each time I sit in the car, I select that same music to hear while driving. So what am I doing here? I had, you know, the taste of a certain music. I saw that I liked it. And I keep trying to play it again and again, selecting it again and again. And so you'll find that we keep doing this also, all the time. It's hot outside. You feel hot, you turn on the fan. It's a nice um, feeling, the sensation on the skin. It feels cool. So now whenever you go, wherever you go, if the fan is not on, even before you sit down, you turn on the fan, you select that and you go after it. Similarly, if there is a taste that we dislike, so suppose some food item I dislike, if I dislike karela or some, some food item, then what I am doing now is very often I taste once, I dislike it. Now I avoid it. So I do not select that, I select something else. So I am avoiding the tastes that I dislike and I am selecting the tastes that I like. This also keeps happening throughout the day and we may not be aware of it. <clears throat> so this imagination keeps going on within us all the time. This, you know, where this imagination is going on, this part of the self is sometimes referred to as mind. Some people refer or somewhere, some places in traditional writings and all, only this selecting, tasting, the expectation part is referred to as the mind. But very often this whole imagination area, this part is referred to as the mind. We are just calling it B2 block for no particular reason. It is just for our convenience that we know when we refer to the B2 block, we are talking about these activities within us. So if you look at the desire within, now there is no guidance from inside because you can see that we have not awakened to the higher activities. So where is this desire coming from? It's actually coming from outside. We may not realize it, we may think it is our desire. We sit down to watch TV. I don't know if anybody watches TV anymore. It's all internet now. But supposing you are watching something and you see ads. You see an ad for some cold drink. And you just keep looking at that person on the screen, enjoying the taste of that. Next thing you know, it has become your desire. So you go out, you start thinking about it first, you will start analyzing, you will start thinking, where can I get it from? How much does it cost? Which is the shop nearby? I can walk to it or I can go by car or I can take the scooter and so many things. So how to get that desire, we start thinking about that. And the selection, of course, when you go there, you have it in mind, what you have seen 
there may be many cold drinks in the shop but what you saw on the screen of your device you have a taste of that so you select that and you come back and you think it is your desire but if you go back to where it started from you weren't even thinking about this you were quite comfortable at home and suddenly you saw this and it had become your desire so you'll notice that we keep doing these kind of things so this is an example of a desire which is being motivated by sensation from outside similarly you have many desires that are motivated by preconditionings so somebody says something about some eventuality and we go after it in college we hear that you have to get a job with the highest pay package that is best so we go after it and we it somewhere it becomes our desire we want it to happen and we don't question anything about it similarly if you you know when you are say you hear things you have to have such and such job you must get a promotion every so many years we may have heard all this and it becomes our desire that every so many years i must get promoted is it really my desire or is it something i heard so a lot of times even in that what we were discussing about the cold drink ad now the ad is for the cold drink but it is shown in an environment where all these friends are sitting enjoying having fun together laughter all of that so now i have after seeing that ad i have this preconditioning that drinking this is going to be associated with friends laughter happiness enjoyment all of that and it becomes my desire so we keep seeing that there are so many examples of this and yesterday we had a before i go to the assignment the third source which we have not talked about because here we are talking about no guidance from inside but the third source from which the desire can come is your natural acceptance and even though the higher activities have not opened up or we are not aware of them still that highest point of pure observer activity of realization from that point we get some glimpse of the natural acceptance that is there within each one of us even though we have not awakened to the higher activities but we need to refer to it if you don't refer to it of course it keeps lying there dormant as if it's not there so that can be a third source that has to do with the purpose and that when you ask that question about the purpose and you verify it for yourself now it is truly your desire not something from outside so we had asked this question what is you know where are our desires being motivated from yesterday if we could check whether it is preconditioning sensation or natural acceptance so it will not be one answer 
you will notice that moment to moment i may have a different desire and each time we become aware of the desire we must check where is it coming from preconditioning sensation or natural acceptance and then we can write this down because it will be many answers and you will notice sometimes it is one or the other or the third sometimes our desires are being motivated by preconditioning sometimes sometimes by sensation and sometimes by natural acceptance regarding yesterday uh, assignment mm -hmm. i verified with one desire constructing another house Mm -hmm. for, for me mm -hmm. uh, i it is not uh, from the source of preconditioning or sensation but mm -hmm. it is due to natural acceptance mm -hmm. because while justifying this uh, i thought that i have two sons and they need two property so therefore i can go for the second one and i have verified throughout the day several times and each time it came to my self that it is due to the natural acceptance not from any other source not from preconditioning or sensation how old is your son uh, my uh, elder one is 35 and uh, the younger one is 27 yeah so we'll have to see you see we have created so many um the setup that we have today the system that we have created today we think this is how it is so if i have two children i need two properties if i have three children i need three properties mm -hmm. i mean if yeah. one possibility can be the traditional system of living in a joint family i'm not saying right or wrong i'm just giving one more possibility we may not have thought of there can be a system of a joint family where you have you know people get married they come to the same house so now you are instead of setting up house in two three different places and having to spend all that amount for having you know you build another house you furnish that house you put appliances in that house all of that so now for that you need more physical facility now it becomes a need yeah but did we did we also check whether this desire for a house is truly our own desire or it is a preconditioning that you know we have heard from the beginning that once the children grow up then they need a house and they have to get married also they have to have their own house and so many things may be there so i am not going to say anything about you know right wrong need want but i think it is important that we check within ourselves what is it that we really want and if it is an older child you know we may have constructed the house ourselves and they may want to construct a house a certain way themselves it's very interesting lot of times we keep things aside for use by the next generation and by the time it is time for the next generation to use it lot of times the next generation doesn't want it because they say it is out of style you will notice this yeah. then it is a waste but we have slogged our life trying to accumulate something for the next generation not for myself but in the belief that this will be good for the other yes yes 
but when they grow up and they actually have to be there or they have to use those things they might say that you know this is old fashioned and these days nobody wears these kind of clothes and this kind of furniture is old style and they'll anyway go out and get new things mm. so, <laughs> so yeah. i'm just putting one more possibility there so we can so like this we can see so many things that go on within us and that that way our need for physical facility becomes more and more and more ultimately if we ask ourselves what we want yeah we would like to be you know when you are as a family together i'm not saying that this is what you need to do or anybody should do like this because today's circumstances have become such for many people that these possibilities may not be there but you know in the traditional joint family system the elder people they are there with the younger people uh, a typical um traditional indian family may have joint family may have like 10 members approximately mm. so you may have the elder people the husband wife you may have or what you call grandparents you may have the children and then you may have the grandchildren three, three generation ah three generation so that is a very common it's not an impossibility even now today many households you will see that and in that kind of setup one thing that is very very um good for the whole setup is that the parents who are active who are working in society outside who are working somewhere they are busy they don't have that much time for the children but the grandparents they have lot of time on their hands so they are able to spend lot of time with the children and so the grandparents who would otherwise have been lonely or depressed or something are actually very active because now they are busy with the grandchildren and the grandchildren are getting lot of guidance from the grandparents today what is happening is lot of times we have nuclear families parents are busy at work no time for the children or very little time for the children children are going to some crash or you know when they are small they are being taken care of by some babysitter or some play school or somewhere during the day lot of times mothers are dropping their child to the parents house somewhere else so that the grandparents may be able to take care of the children and all that is happening and we don't uh, you know there is no other option visible at that time because that is how the setup is or that is how we have made the setup so all these possibilities are there we can look at all of the possibilities and see what is it that we really want you see even in the old age most parents want to be with their children they don't want to be separate isolated away from them in a big house by themselves but circumstances being what they are because you know we have given lot of importance to the physical facility the job the career so the child has to go for the career somewhere else isn't it yeah. set up house somewhere else so now you are spending double the physical facility and that child for maintaining that house may be having to pay emis and for those emis may be needing to 
you know the job should have this much money so that the person can pay those emis and so it goes on and on and on so we actually build up what we call our needs many a time because we have set up systems like that today but other possibilities are also there yesterday uh, in the hostel uh, there is a one uh, water storeroom in the hostel so there we a uh, water filter is installed uh, we need a gradient uh, to uh, send the water to the kitchen so the gradient is not there that's why we want to uh, do that uh, extension of that uh, height of that building so that is the desire uh, i have from so many days and uh, so that uh, i uh, so many thoughts are going how i should execute that uh, um, uh, process and a uh, process and uh, uh, yesterday i bring this information to our higher authorities so they accept it so uh, this is the desire i want to know that whether it is belongs to the natural acceptance or the precondition or sensation yeah see many things will come up like this mm -hmm. is the desire coming from preconditioning from sensation or for from natural acceptance let me just say this thing that the desire has to do with what i want to be mm -hmm. it has to do with the feeling that mm -hmm. you can refer to natural acceptance but if i say i want to do such and such thing outside is it naturally acceptable to me or not that kind of answer will be very difficult unless you try to see for yourself the purpose of that the purpose with which we are doing is that you know in it is sort of taking care of the well being of everybody mm -hmm. then you can say yes so we look at things with a very narrow window right now you know mm -hmm. so we are seeing for ourselves and maybe the immediate people around me when we refer to natural acceptance natural acceptance is much more than that natural acceptance we have a natural acceptance for relationship we have a natural acceptance for harmony we have a natural acceptance for coexistence so that has to do with the larger whole picture so for the small man in the outside we have to look inside and see you know what is the root desire i want to be happy is it leading to my happiness and the happiness of the other is it leading to mutual happiness is it leading to mutual prosperity then it is probably right for me can you give an one example for a third source uh, other than the precondition sensation for instance ah. i we talked of that cold drink we talked uh -huh. of the cold drink we said that one possibility is i like the look of it or i remember the taste of it so now my desire is to go after that and get it mm. because i tasted it somewhere and i liked it or i saw uh -huh. on the screen somebody is enjoying the taste and it looks very delicious looks very nice so i think i will go for it so it has become my desire that is sensation you like the look of it you like the form whatever hmm? another source interesting i am associating it with happiness enjoyment friends company a good time therefore i when i see that ad with lot of people having fun together all of that i go for it because somewhere i have associated happiness fun enjoyment togetherness with it that can be preconditioning yeah 
but both are from outside now okay. if i see what is the purpose why do i want that cold drink it may be i am thirsty isn't it so if i am thirsty that means requirement of the body is for water so i can drink water yeah. as well and if i look yeah. at the cold drink i will find it has so many ingredients that are actually harmful for the body then i ask myself you know do i want to nurture the body do i want to harm the body of course i want to nurture the body so i may not go for that cold drink i might go for drinking water at home instead so sir like that okay so here is another option the option of having the higher activities unfolded within us there is a possibility where we have become aware of the higher activities within us what we refer to as the b1 block again there is no particular reason to name it like that it is just something for convenience and we show it in purple just for contrast so here you will see there are some activities that are mentioned here contemplation understanding realization contemplation has to do with seeing my relationship with every other unit and seeing my role my participation in the relationship that is contemplation understanding has to do with understanding the harmony the self organization that is there in each and every unit how things are happening how you know not only is every unit organized but every unit is seeing its relationship with every other unit and fulfilling that relationship doing their participation and when it comes to realization it is the realization the seeing of the coexistence the way it is being able to see the space the subtlest reality and being able to see all these units submerged in space so being able to see that this relationship is already there i don't have to create it i don't have to make it i only need to understand it so we have to slowly unfold these higher activities within us and we have to go all the way up to realization only there can we truly see for ourselves this coexistence the submergence of the units in space which is the basis the foundation for this relationship you know the self organization the the interconnectedness of all the units so slowly this unfolding has to happen in all of us once this unfolding starts happening we start moving towards taking more responsibility in our relationships with other human beings with nature we we um instead of looking outside for happiness we are happy within and with that we work for the outside to help others outside so that question was asked about contemplation so contemplation when i contemplate on the relationship i am able to see that the relationship is already there and i need to participate 
in this relationship so now this decides my desire my feeling so earlier when this purple block was say as an example earlier when the purple block was uh, sort of in shadows or in a veil and i could not refer to it at that time it was all about the outside my feeling was being driven by the outside my desire was being driven by the outside so if outside somebody shouted got angry with me i got disturbed and i thought it is because this person shouted at me that's why i got disturbed and so i try to either avoid that person or i just start shouting myself you can see that a feeling of opposition may have been there in somebody outside but seeing that i also develop a feeling of opposition within myself once the contemplation starts i start reflecting on my road i start seeing things from the others perspective i start seeing that this person who is shouting seems to be disturbed and when i see that i also see that i don't need to get disturbed by this person he is shouting because he is uncomfortable he is unhappy now my concern becomes how to help him be happy do you see the shift that happens my focus becomes on myself what is my role what is my participation it shifts from trying to get that happiness from outside and rather seeing my role my participation this contemplation leads to a feeling of relationship in me because i start seeing the relationship and it's not that i see it only with one person or two people or three people or only with my family members i see it with everybody so with this um, this drives my feeling now because i see the relationship i see my participation in the relationship with this i ensure my feeling so this is the role of the contemplation a lot of times the feeling you know the desire the feeling in the first case where the only the b2 block is active we are looking for the happiness from outside once we start you know um, unfolding these higher activities when we are going from bottom to top we are going to unfold firstly the contemplation part because as you go from top, from bottom to top these activities are getting getting more and more subtle so we slowly open up or we start becoming aware of the activity of contemplation with that i am able to see my relationship with every other unit in this existence and i see what is my participation in the relationship so when i see that participation i am no longer affected by somebody else's misbehavior outside earlier that same person may have been misbehaving i was getting offended and getting a feeling of opposition and i thought it was because of that person why because i am looking for happiness from outside i want that the other person should give me the right feeling and when they don't i get unhappy now i see with my role once my focus shifts to my role my participation i see that that person who is shouting is actually uncomfortable himself it's not that he is shouting at me he is uncomfortable he is unhappy 
So when I see that, then my focus shifts from trying to get the right feeling from him because I know he cannot give me the right feeling because he doesn't have it. From where will he give it? So I ensure my feeling within, the right feeling within, and I see what I can do to help the other person. So Didi, regarding this contemplation, it's like, uh, just want to clarify. When we are like uh, uh, observing ourselves and um, then there are these feelings and they are not right feelings. Like we are, our feelings are based on um, conditioning and uh, sensations. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. we kind of get engaged into uh, you know our own things and uh, when we actually uh, able to refer to natural natural acceptance like moment by moment then we create a uh, you know stability within us because otherwise we are into a chain of you know feelings um, yes. and then we'll be able to see then we'll have this uh, if you so called call um, uh, enough stability within ourselves so that we can look at the participation in the other things mm -hmm. and the actual contemplation will start yes and right I mean is that right yeah. the way to go about it is this only to refer to the natural acceptance okay. the moment you refer yeah. to your natural acceptance and you ask yourself what is naturally acceptable to me? Feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? It's very clear it is feeling of relationship. So with that feeling of relationship, now you contemplate on your participation in the relationship. 